Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sociology Analytica. This is Pooja Prasanna, your sociology faculty. Today, we'll handle uh, the last question on caste system. And I have taken again a previous year question. This is 2020 question, 2020 question. That is just how do you justify Dumont's deliberate stress on ideology that produced intellectualized account of the Indian society? It's a 10 marker question. So it's a uh, question is very simple. You have to talk about how Dumont has justified uh, whatever his ideology, how he has justified. This is it. Okay, how do you justify Dumont's? It's basically by taking the by taking points of Dumont's justification. If you feel it has been justified, you just write it as like <clears throat> you can take that. Okay, uh, so first and foremost thing is what how you can start your uh, answer is uh, by writing his book title. Okay, so, okay, so see, uh, Gure, Srinivas, Desai, and uh, Andre Betel, Louis Dumont, and S. C. Dubey. Dipankar Gumta. See, all these people, at least five, six people, please at least try to remember the book title. It is very important. Okay. So, start with writing the book title, Homo Hierarchical Caste System and Its Implication, 1966. So, in this, he has actually, in detail, he has discussed about caste system. Okay. So, he, uh, uh, his understanding of caste system is on the basis of what? Monocausal explanation of purity and pollution. There is only one explanation. Monocausal is what? Only one single explanation for caste system. That is a structure of caste system or the Varna system. What is that? It is purity and pollution. And from where, <clears throat> where did he get this, uh, you know, a binary identification of binary opposite? Binary opposite, what is the meaning of binary opposite? Something can be either pure or it can be pollu polluted. There cannot be a midway between purity and pollution. This is nothing but binary opposite. Okay, zero, one is a binary opposite. So purity is in this this end, pollution will be on the other end. This is nothing but binary opposite. So binary, so there's a sociologist called as Levi Strauss. Levi Strauss has actually talked about binary opposite in his other Mexican study. But the same binary opposite has been taken by Louis Dumont in order to understand caste system. Okay, which binary opposite in Indian context is taking purity and pollution. So on the basis of purity and pollution, so people will be assigned to different different caste or different different varna. If you are, <clears throat> if you are, uh, if your lifestyle is pure lifestyle, then you would be put on a upper varna. If your lifestyle is polluted lifestyle, then you would be put on a lower varna. Okay, so this is nothing but binary opposite. Did you understand? And. Uh, <clears throat> He also gives us a cultural explanation of caste system because before them, so most of most of them uh, talk caste from the economical angle, isn't it? That is caste-based occupation. Economical angle here is nothing but caste-based occupation. That is different caste, they are given different, different occupation. And eventually the occupation will be, uh, you know, transferred from one generation to the other generation. So <clears throat> that uh, caste, that is the occupation identity itself will become your caste identity. So this is how they'll be explaining from economical per perspective. But then uh, Louis Dumont is not explaining from an economical perspective, he's explaining from cultural angle. And uh, this cultural explanation of any topic, this has been again taken by one more sociologist called as Celestial Bogol. Celestial Bogol explains, usually he takes up the cultural explanation of a particular topic and uh, Louis Dumont has explained caste system from the cultural angle, okay. Particularly this point we'll see in a, in a while in the next slide that is caste system also plays an integrative role. I'll, uh, you know, we'll explain how caste system plays an integrative role, okay. Moving on, see he gives importance to that is the culture aspect that is uh, as he's explaining from cultural explanation of caste system. So that is why he gives importance to values, traditions and culture or the other secular values of Indian society. Secular values like power, money, population, etc., etc. So these are considered secular values. If you remember, M. N. Srinivas actually all will be giving importance to secular values. Along with culture, he also gives values to the secular value. But then uh, <clears throat> Dumont is only uh, Dumont is giving only importance to the cultural aspect that is values, traditions, and culture over the secular values of Indian society. Fine. And what he says is that caste is not a form of stratification. That is, we see right. That is different, different strata. That is Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, etc. He says it is not a form of typical stratification what we find in other. For example, the way we find in class, upper class, middle class, lower class, it is not like that. Okay. It's a special form of inequality and hierarchy is a central tenant. It's a special form of inequality. Why it's a special form of inequality? Because the division is purely on what basis? It is purely on the basis of purity and pollution. Okay, it is, it is purely on the basis of purity and pollution. So that is why it is not stratification, it is not inequality, it is a special form of inequality which is, you know, which also has a hierarchy in it. So more uh, pure set, set of <coughs> habits will become 
will go to the top position and least uh, i mean or least pure or most polluted will go to the bottom position okay so hence it actually plays a integrative role see because most of the stratification it has hierarchy and uh, see and that hierarchy leads to inequality but this inequality is not because of economy not because of power it is purely because of the cultural angle so that is why it actually plays a integrative role so people are aware which position they occupy based on this occupation what they have to do what they should not do which occupation they should take etc so they they are very clearly aware of what their whatever their position is so that is why there will not be any problem there will not be any dysfunctionality in the society and thus caste system acts plays a integrative role okay moving on he also says that see caste system is based on non competitive ritual hierarchical system for example if you take class structure in class a middle class or a lower class person some always you know he'll think of working hard so that he'll become a upper class member middle class always work hard to become a upper class member isn't it so there will always be a competition between the different classes but here in in caste it is not like that there is completely no competition at all if you are a brahmin you will die as brahmin your kids will be brahmin your coming generations will be brahmin if you are a dalit you are, you will be dalit your kids will be dalit your generations will be dalit no one is trying you know no one is fighting that they want to change they want to change their caste uh, identity or the varna identity okay so that is why it's a non competitive ritual hierarchy which is not present anywhere according to uh, according to liu demont it is not present anywhere this form of non competitive hierarchy is present only in indian society okay next he also says that see most of the hierarchy is what on the basis of either monetary aspect or on the power hasn't it if that is the case then see brahmin kshatriyas vaishyas and shudra who are kshatriyas kshatriyas has power and who are vaishyas vaishyas has more monetary power isn't it they have more financial power and kshatriyas has more political power if that is the case then these these things these two sections would be on the top of brahmins isn't it because uh, brahmins have cultural power isn't it if you if you remember the feudal estate in feudal estate kings was not king was not within the estate system king is above the estate system isn't it so this is what he is saying that it is not about power it is purely about the culture it is purely about purity and pollution so it is so it is non competitive ritual hierarchy and thus it is it plays a integrative role no competition no competition means no chaos no dysfunctionality so no um, you know no disintegration also did you understand and further see this <clears throat> this is what he talks about traditional caste system okay what you can do is see this is his understanding of caste system but you can see you can actually don't please don't stop here what you can do is this is what he talks about the whole of caste system how caste system is there how caste system is playing integrative role how everyone is aware of their role know how no one is fighting all these points you write and what he also talks about is he talks about substantialization of caste system what is substantial change substantialization of caste it is nothing but change in uh, in a change in role of caste system he says that see caste system is never going to go away from indian society okay irrespective of who you are caste system will always be there only change will be that substantialization of caste what is substantialization of caste that is the traditional interdependence will be replaced by competing interests in today's time the occupational the, that is caste based occupation to a greater extent is decreasing isn't it and because of that decrease in caste based occupation what it might be previously they used to traditionally you know interdependent on each, each other but it will be replaced by competitive interest that is whosoever is specialized so they will be taking up that particular role so these are the only change within the caste system but as such caste system is not going to disintegrate in the society so this is what louis demont said so now the question is how do you justify demont so if you think that see the the end part the conclusion part is totally up to you okay how you can write i'll i'll explain how you can write okay see there are two things one is <clears throat> do you believe dumont is right or do you believe dumont was wrong okay so can you explain so how if dumont is right then you can just say that yeah it it plays integrative role it helps in continuation of uh, society it helps in maintaining functionality etc etc you can just write those let's say that if you believe that dumont is wrong like it's is not completely right or that there might be certain uh, uh, you know wrong aspects also what you can do is like he only talked about that is non uh, that is non no, sorry he only talked in terms of binary opposites okay but then that is not this is not the only case isn't it there are other aspects also he talks about purity and pollution 
so there are also other aspects towards it also it justifies purity and pollution so all these things are actually basically some of the negative points of a uh, demon okay so what i would say is like you know you can take a stand of demon in this particular question you can actually take a stand if you believe demont was right you can justify that that yes demont was right if you believe that demont was wrong how do you think demont is wrong see in this uh, <clears throat> only we can see lot of points isn't it the first and foremost is how he talks about purity and pollution how he talks about integrative role if it integration then why we have so much of conflict isn't it so all these points you can write it down and also he neglects economy again economy cannot be neglected again he, ne he neglects secular value again secular values cannot be neglected so these points if you write and then you can you know take a stand fine however you want to take a stand you can take a stand fine and if you have any further queries please drop your queries in the comment section i'll see you all tomorrow with a new chapter thank you so much